Welcome to Night Light. Step away from the mainstream and gather around as we enlighten the world and our realities and travel this cosmic journey we call life. Join us as we share with you and provide that beacon that can guide us all to a better way. Explore with us as we examine a metaphysical montage of spiritual insights covering everything from the mundane to the magical, UFOs to unicorns, and everything in between. This is a time of awakening, of sharing and evolving, of spreading our wings and soaring on the cosmic breath of creation. Come and join with other light-minded spirits as we weave our lights together to seek understanding, enlightenment, and with a little luck, some wisdom. This is Night Light, a reminder that you are never alone. Everybody, thank you for joining us tonight. This is Neon Twilight with Solaris Blue Raven. And tonight, she's going to be going back into the Emerald Tablets, which are a favorite of many, many people. And, of course, written by Toth, who the, was the Egyptian god of writing, magic, wisdom, and the moon. But most importantly, author of the Emerald Tablets, which hold great wisdom for those who have the eyes to see and ears to hear, and hopefully tonight her eyes will see and your eyes will hear and everybody will be a little bit enlightened. So I'm going to turn it over to Solaris now. There you go, Solaris. Well, thank you, Barbara, and good evening, everybody, and what a lovely introduction that was, so thank you very much. And, yeah, I'm excited to dive back into this work. It's it's fabulous, and and uh, Barbara, it's always a pleasure to, to work with you on this, too. Uh, you have a lot of interesting insight when it comes down to decoding the information. So we're going to get started tonight here. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, let me just pull this up here. We're on number uh, chapter five. So we're looking at the tablet number five, if I'm not mistaken. Uh-huh. And that would be uh, the Dweller of Unal. And providing I pronounce this right. Okay. So I hope everybody's doing well out there. Welcome. Grab some tea or coffee and... Dive in. We'll have a good time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started here. The Dweller of Unal. Oft dream I have buried Atlantis, lost in the ages that have passed into night. Aeon on aeon, thou existed in beauty, a light shining through the darkness of night, mighty in power, ruling the earthborn, lord of the earth in Atlantis' day. King of the nations, master of wisdom, light through sun tall, keeper of the way, dwelt in his temple, the master of Unal, Light of the Earth in Atlantis Day. Master He from a cycle beyond us, living in bodies as one among men, not as the earthborn, He from beyond us, son of a cycle, advanced beyond men. Know ye, O man, that Horlet the Master was never one with the children of men. Far in the past time when Atlantis first grew as a power, appeared one appeared there one with the key of wisdom, showing the way of light to all. Showed he to all men the path of attainment, way of the light that flows among men, mastering darkness, leading the man's soul upward to heights that were one with the light. Divided the kingdoms, he into sections, ten were they, ruled by children of men. Upon another built he a temple, built not built but not by the children of men. Out of the ether called he its substance, molded and formed by the power of Colon, and correct me if I'm wrong, Barbara, into the forms he <laughs> built with his mind. <laughs> I, I guess on that one, my apologies. Mile upon mile, Tolan. it covered. Yeah. yeah. Tolan. Okay, so we're good. Okay, mile upon mile, it covered the island. Space upon space, it grew in its might. Black, yet not black, but dark like the space time. Deep in its heart, the essence of light. Swiftly, the temple grew into being, molded and shaped by the word of the dweller, called from the formless into the form. Builded he then within it, 
great chambers, filled them with forms called forth from the ether, filled them with wisdom called forth by his mind. Formless was he within his temple, yet was he formed in the image of men, dwelling among them, yet not of them, strange and far different, was he from the children of men, chose he then from among the people, three who became his gateway, choose he the three from the highest to become his links with Atlantis. Messengers they who carried his counsel to the kings of the children of men, brought he forth others and taught them wisdom, teachers they to the children of men, placed he them on the island of Undal to stand as the teachers of light to men. Each of those who were thus chosen taught must he be for years five and ten. Only thus could he have understanding to bring light to the children of men. Thus there came into being the temple, a dwelling place for the master of men. I so have ever sought wisdom, searching in darkness and searching in light. Long in my youth I traveled the pathway, seeking ever new knowledge to gain, until after much striving one of the three to me brought the light. Brought he to me the commands of the dweller, called me from the darkness into the light. Brought he me before the dweller, deep in the temple before the great fire. There on the great throne beheld I the dweller, clothed with the light and flashing with fire. Down I knelt before that great wisdom, feeling the light flowing through me in waves. Heard I then the voice of the dweller, O darkness, come into the light. Long have ye sought the pathway to light. Each soul on earth that loosens its fetters shall soon be made free from the bondage of night. Forth from the darkness have ye arisen, closer approach the light of your goal. Here ye shall dwell as one of my children, keeper of records gathered by wisdom, instrument thou of the light from the beyond, ready by thou made to do what is needed, preserver of wisdom through the ages of darkness that shall come fast on the children of men. Live thee here and drink of all wisdom, secrets and mysteries unto thee shall unveil. Then answered I, the master of cycles, saying, O light that descended to men, give thou to me of thy wisdom that I might be a teacher of men, give thou of the light that I may be free. Spoke then to me again the master, age after age shall ye live through your wisdom, I, when, O Atlantis, the, wa- the ocean waves roll, holding the light, though hidden in the darkness, ready to come, when erst thou shall call. Go thee now and learn great wisdom, grow thou through the light to infinities all. Long then dwelt I in the temple of the dweller, until at last I was one with the light. Followed I then the path to the star plains, followed I then the pathway to light. Deep into earth's heart I followed the pathway, learning the secrets, below as above, learning the pathways to the halls of Amente, learning the law that balances the world. To earth's hidden chambers pierced I, by my wisdom, deep through the earth's crust, into the pathway, hidden for ages from the children of men. Unveiled before me, ever more wisdom, until I reached a new knowledge, found that all is part of all, and all, great and yet greater than all that we know. Searched I infinity's heart through the, all the ages, deeper, deep and yet deeper, more mysteries I found. Now as I look back through the ages, now I that wisdom is boundless, ever grown greater through the ages, one with infinity, greater than all. Light there was in ancient Atlantis, yet darkness too was hidden in all. Fell from the light into the darkness, some who had risen to heights among men. Proud they became because of their knowledge. Proud were they of their place among men. Deep delved into the forbidden, opened the gateway what led to below. Sought they to gain even more knowledge, but seeking to bring it up from below. He who descends below must have balance, else he is bound by lack of our light. Open that, then they, open they then by their knowledge, pathways forbidden to man. But in his temple, all seeing, the dweller lay in the Aguante, while through Atlantis he soul roamed free. He, he saw he the Atlanteans by their magic opening the gateway that would bring to earth a great woe. Fast fled his soul then back to his body, up he arose from his Aguante, called he the three mighty messengers, gave the commands that shattered the world. Deep neath the earth's crust to the halls of Amente, swiftly descended the dweller, called he, then on the powers the seven lords wielded, changed the earth's balance. Down sank Atlantis beneath the dark waves, shattered the gateway that had been opened, shattered the doorway that led down below. All of the islands were shattered except Onal, and part of the island of the sons of the dweller, 
Preserve he them to, te- to be the teachers, lights on the path for those to come after, lights for the lesser children of men. Called he that I thought before him, gave me commands for all I should do, saying, Take thou, O those, all of your wisdom, take all your records, take all your magic, go thou forth as a teacher of men, go thou forth reserving the records, until in time light grows among men, light shall thou be all through the ages, hidden yet found by enlightened men, over all earth give we the po- we ye the power, free thou to give or take it away. Gather now the sons of Atlantis, take them and flee to the, ch- to the people of the rock caves, fly to the land of the children of Chem. Then gathered I the sons of Atlantis into the spaceship I brought all my records, brought the records of sunken Atlantis, gathered I all of my powers, instruments, many of mighty magic. Up then we rose on wings of the morning, high we arose above the temple, leaving behind the three and dweller deep in the halls neath the temple, closing the pathways to the Lord's of the cycles, yet ever to him who has knowing, open shall be the path to Amente. Fast fled we then on the wings of the morning, fled to the land of the children of Chem. There by my power I conquered and ruled them, raised I to light the children of Chem. Deep neath the rocks I buried my spaceship, waiting the time when man might be free. Over the spaceship erected a marker in the form of a lion, yet like unto men, there's neath the image rest yet my spaceship. Forth to be brought when she, forth to be brought when he shall arise. Know ye, O man, that far in the future invaders shall come from out of the deep. Then awake ye, who have who have wisdom, bring forth my ship and conquer with ease. Deep neath the image lies my secret. Search and find the pyramid I built. Each to the other is the keystone. Each the gateway that leads into life. Follow the key I leave behind me. Seek in the doorway to life shall be thine. Seek thou in my pyramid, deep in the passage that ends in the wall. Use thou the key of the seven, and open to thee the pathway with fall will fall. Now unto thee I have given my wisdom. Now unto thee I have given my way. Follow the pathway. Solve thou my secrets. Unto thee I have shown the way. Wow. Powerful. Yes. <clears throat> now let's explain what happened. <laughs> yes. Um <laughs> Yeah, uh, it it sounds very convoluted and it sounds a little strange, but basically, um, Toth was uh, he studied with the masters, but the dweller had no form. And in many places, they talk about the dweller, and the dweller was really pure energy that took human form from time to time. But basically, his spirit roved the. Uh, roamed the universe and and so i mean what was what was in your opinion what was it that that caused him to return so fast to to um and and basically he went to the big guys and said you know we have he he changed he 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 changed the balance of the earth so that atlantis fell what mm-hmm. what was it do you think that drew him back and so far as changing the configuration? Well, you know, it, it says that he was roaming and that, and that suddenly he, he noticed that there were big changes that weren't good and, and he hurried back to mm-hmm. his body and that's when all heck broke. Oh, right. Well, I would say that maybe it has something to do with the fact that he was still connected here, that he had an obligation to come back and, and kind of uh, assist in, in balance. I mean, that's what it sounds like to me. I think we talked about this before, that the idea behind him being in a stasis to some degree and projecting himself. Is that what you're talking about? Because that could have been yeah. a reason um, behind it all. Yeah, no doubt about that. What really stood out I was think, the um, the ship. Go ahead. Oh, well, yeah, but I, I, I want to go back to the temple that, that they talk about. <laughs> it was somewhere I read, and I'm not sure where it was. It was three miles long and three miles wide and three miles high. So mm-hmm. this temple enormous. was a key. A cube of energy that was that was of this dimension and not of this dimension. So mm-hmm. that so that so that what would, had been created. I mean, it, it's almost as as though you couldn't see it was there, and yet it was there if you had to go to it. Basically, right. is the impression I got. 
Mm-hmm. That's vibrating on another field of energy, perhaps. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it sounds and, like. And, and, and yeah, it always it, it impresses me that now when this was written, when this was um, interpreted over a hundred years ago, mm. the mention of a spaceship. Yes. Was kind of unusual. And and it, it sometimes I I kind of look at it and I think okay so that but all of these people not the Atlanteans but all of the the adepts and everything were able to go out of body and yet they had a spaceship. Mm-hmm. It it all it almost seemed incongruous but but yet it, it came in very handy. So mm-hmm. um, but. But right. when 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 Toth was told to take all his people and go to the land of Chem, um, you want to explain where the land of Chem was? Okay, now I'm I'm correlating it with Egypt, but I know that's not probably correct. Is no, it? that is correct. Okay, is all right. Correct. So I was. <laughs> this is a trick question. <laughs> okay, good. Because that's what I saw. Um, and and he called them hairy barbarians. So it, so the people were a little primitive. And um, mm-hmm. I think in one of the earlier chapters, he talked about raising his staff and quieting them to tell them that they came to teach them. And in mm-hmm. many ways, it, in many ways, there is a strange correlation to um, Moses taking his people out of Egypt and mm-hmm. and you know looking for the promised land, and then Toth taking his people out of Atlantis to go find what would become a promised land of Egypt. So it was kind of like um, when Moses did his thing, it had already been done before by Toth, you know, thousands mm-hmm. of years earlier, certainly. And especially right. even, even, even the staff, you know, uh, was reminiscent of Moses. Mm-hmm. I agree. So, so it was, yeah, that's very, very interesting. It was, well, it's almost there's, like they use the mythology a... behind it to create their own storyboard, you know. And I, I hate to say that regarding religion or anything, but it does seem like they've borrowed so much over the over the centuries of mystery school teachings and also these these events that have been kind of revamped and and put into a different formula for religious indoctrination to some degree. Well, absolutely, and it's it's not just the Egyptians, but it's you know the Christians and it's the Hebrews and mm-hmm. it's the Norse and it's. Native Americans, I mean, they they have the same mythology, basically. The same stories are being told over and over and over again. And, and I've often said that, that if a story repeats itself or if, if something comes through generation after generation after generation, there has to be a wisdom and a reason we are still remembering it. And I agree. This, this, this all goes back, I mean, and it, this took place thousands of years ago. Mm-hmm. Thousands and thousands right. and what, thousands yeah. of years ago. Exactly. And what so, else comes to mind, too, is it was it Edgar Casey that mentioned the same thing with the spaceship between, and it sounds like the Sphinx, but the um, the, bury, the burying of the ship. Oh, yes. And, and he, said, he said the, the, the shape of a, um, a lion. And, and if anybody has ever looked at the Sphinx and knowing how, absolutely anal the Egyptians were about balance and proportion. Mm-hmm. Having a huge lion shape with a teeny tiny head on it was nothing they would have done. Right. Absolutely Agreed. nothing. So there had to be a lion head there to begin with that mm-hmm. some pharaoh recarved. I totally agree. Yeah, that's what I saw. And that's what's so interesting about it, but it's it's like the same pattern once you, once again it's repeating itself, and that does mean something in my opinion. And you have to ask yourself about the ship itself: was it in between spaces of fields of energy, more interdimensional space, astral plane? So many things that uh, we can look at on that level, besides it being a physical marker, more about something that's more energetic and activated through frequency. Yeah, I I would, to my mind. I think that I know they've they've used lidar and all sorts of stuff around the Sphinx, and they they have found that there are um, openings beneath there 
but because they don't want to collapse the sinks, they won't allow anybody to um, to dig. But the feeling I got from all of this was, yeah, beneath the sinks there is a portal, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and it's a matter of um, you have to be of a proper consciousness to be able to first see it and second open it. I agree. So yeah. so and, and I and I do. I do believe, you know, it does lead to an interdimensional um, spot in time, space. And mm-hmm. there may well be a ship there, but I think if you, if you really brought in tractors and, and, and diggers and stuff like that, that, that you wouldn't find a spaceship there. You, you'd probably find a chamber of some sort, but it would probably be very nondescript. And in that chamber most probably is the portal, but if you don't, know it and feel it you would you'd walk away Mhm. exactly yeah i very much agree with that let me ask you something with the uh, use out the key of the seven what does that what does that ring to you in a sense to me it reminds me of the chakras but I, i'm looking at it on a different field of energy but what does that symbolize to you the seven yeah when he says um, um, it, use out the key of the seven yeah um i would i would say that it does have something to do with the chakras, which would link the energy centers in the body together so mm-hmm. that possibly a, you know, a, a chakra or two above the crown chakra is probably there. And um, to me, once you clear, clear and connect all the chakras, because, you know, none of us have them all completely cleared. None of us are, are absolute clear channels there there's always there are always things that we are working through but it seems to me that that anybody who's on on a on a journey towards a greater spiritual understanding has they've had those moments when there was a clear channel where everything did come in sync suddenly and you 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 had probably what what so so many people call a mountaintop experience, where there was total bliss, and you knew, you just knew mm-hmm. everything, and and then it was gone. Uh, <laughs> but to be able to maintain that state, then your vision mm-hmm. would go beyond your eyesight, and and the vision you need to do this has nothing to do with your eyesight. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, it reminds me of the light body, and also what you're um, what you're alluding to, and to some degree, in my sense, is that it is yeah, it's the, it's the multidimensional holographic field to the chakra system, which correlates to light body and Merkaba. And once that's activated, yeah, you can get um, well. That's your vehicle of light. So once again, that could bring people into a different space time almost. So it's all very interesting, and the fact that it was written so long ago, I've always been impressed by this. And this is, once again, the the information here is so uh, it's just so powerful when you really look at it. Mm-hmm. And and what the other thing, they talk about interdimensional. They talk about leaving the body, and from what I can, from what I feel at the moment, is that that if 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 one were to find the keys and be attuned, you would leave your physical body and you would go etherically, spiritually, through what, whatever portal is there. I don't think you'd go mm-hmm. clumping into another dimension. I think you would mm-hmm. you would flow there spiritually speaking with all your senses and etherically, you know. You would you mm-hmm. would be there in in a spirit form, not a physical form. Because mm-hmm. where where the real treasure is is not in the physical. It is not on the physical plane. So therefore you have to be able to let go the ties that bind you, so to speak. And I'm not saying die. I'm just saying go out of body. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Path so, of the initiate. And also, um, well, go ahead. I mean, interrupt. No, go ahead. I was going to say also there, there is an aspect of um, calibration to a field. In other words, the whole molecular structure, everything connected to the DNA code, the atomic molecular structure would change in harmonization with the field they're entering into like a, a dimension. So I do think that is a possibility, but I think it takes a, a very, very advanced being to calibrate to the field, almost like an avatar, but I think it can be done. But that's, in my opinion, is when we've kind of gone into that, that uh, ascended master kind of immortality field of energy where we can 
we can do that with the transfiguration of the atom. At least that's what I see. But I think for the most part, yeah, I think it's about the journey itself and how people navigate through consciousness and also astral. Yeah, and I, what, I, what I've been seeing lately is that people studying and getting all this and, you know, this, this um, information inside their heads and not understanding that it's the wisdom the information carries, and then they have to take that wisdom and incorporate it into their own energetic field and then use that energetic field to move into another dimension. It's not, mm-hmm. you know, it, you, you can't take a workshop, get a certificate, and, and transcend reality. It doesn't work. That's the fast track. It would be nice track. if it did. <laughs> yeah. That's the digital fast track. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, a journey. No, it really is. You you can't turn up at one of these portals with a binder full of certificates from classes and God knows what and say, see, I'm qualified, and they'll just look at you and say, you you have enough paper to start a fire. Um, it, it's, <laughs> it's what you put into practice inside of yourself. It's what you're radiating and, and your energetic field radiating at that particular frequency will open all the doors. Mm-hmm. And they won't open yep. until you're there. You can you can sit there and tell them what you've done and said and felt. And unless you your spirit is in the right place, that door stays closed. Mm-hmm. It kind of reminds me of weighing the soul and weighing the spirit to some degree. Although it's not that kind of an initiation into the underworld. But the idea behind that is is really about reading the field of the being who's trying to access the portal. You know, where have they been? What what kind of work have they done? Where where are they at in consciousness and in their own divinity? I think that has a lot to do mm-hmm. with it. And, you know, there are people that haven't taken a class in metaphysics that have the purity of heart that are able to walk Mm -hmm. right in. Oh, sure. So, you know, that's what I love. I, I, you know, it's not a matter of money paid for workshops or studies or anything. And all that stuff is good. But, but it's, it's a part of you and, and, and what your, your heart is and what your spirit is. And, Mm-hmm. It, it it isn't something that you can spend money on. Well, you can spend money on it, but you can't buy it. You earn it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And sometimes you reactivate it from other lifetimes. So it has a lot to do with that too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Let's continue the journey. Are we ready? Yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Um, we are on tablet. Yeah, we're on tablet six now. So this is the key of magic, okay. and it should be very interesting here. Hark ye, O man, to the wisdom of magic. Hark the knowledge of powers forgotten. Long ago in the days of the first man, warfare began between darkness and light. Men then as now were filled with both darkness and light. And while in some darkness held sway, in others light filled the soul. I age old in this warfare, the eternal struggle between darkness and light. Fiercely it is fought all through the ages, using strange powers hidden to man. Adepts has, adepts has, I would have said have. Adepts have adepts. been filled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the other word, but that's good. Adepts has, has there been filled with the blackness, struggling always against the light. I want to rewrite, rewrite this, but forgive me on this. Okay. But others there are yeah. who filled with brightness have ever conquered the darkness of night. Where are ye may be in all ages and plain? Surely ye shall know of the battle with night long ages ago. The sons of the morning. Descending found the world filled with night. There in that past began the struggle, the age of old battle, darkness and light. Many in the time were so filled with darkness that only feebly flamed the light from the night. Some they were masters of darkness who sought to fill all with their darkness, sought to draw others into their night. Fiercely withstood they, the masters of brightness, fiercely fought they from the darkness of night, sought ever to tighten the feathers, the change that the chains that bind men to the darkness of night. Used they always the dark magic, brought into men by the powers of darkness, magic that enshrouded man's soul with darkness. Banded together as in order, brothers of darkness, they through the ages, antagonist, they to the children of men. Walked they always secret and hidden, found yet not found by the children of men. Forever they walked and worked in darkness, hiding from the light in the darkness of night. Silently, secretly, using they their power, enslaving and binding the soul of men. If you did, you have to say something, Barbara. Nope, I sniffled. Oh, oh, okay. 
(laughs) Unseen they come and unseen they go. Man in his ignorance calls them from below. Dark is the way of the dark brothers travel. Dark of the darkness, not of the night. Traveling over earth, they walk through man's dreams. Power they have gained from the darkness around them to call over other dwellers from out of their plane. In ways that are dark and unseen by man, into man's mind, space reach the dark brothers. Around it, they close the veil of their night. There through its lifetime that souls dwell in bondage, bound by the fetters of the veil of the night. Mighty are they in the forbidden knowledge, forbidden because it is one with the night. Hark ye, old man, and list to my warning. Be ye free from the bondage of night. Surrender not your soul to the brothers of darkness. Keep thy face ever turned toward the light. Yet know ye not, O man, that your sorrow only has come through the veil of the night. I, man, heed ye my warning. Strive ever upward. Turn your soul toward the light. The brothers of darkness seek for their brothers, those who travel the pathway of light. For well now, for well know they that those who have traveled far towards the sun and their pathway of light have great and yet greater power to bind with darkness the children of light. List ye, O man, to he who comes to you. But weigh in the balance of his words be be of light. For many there are who walk in dark brightness, and yet are not the children of light. Easy it is to follow their pathway, easy to follow the path that they lead. But yet, O man, heed heed ye my warning, light comes only to him who strives. Hard is the pathway that leads to the wisdom, hard is the pathway that leads to the light. Many shall ye find the stones in your pathway, many the mountains to climb toward the night, or toward the light, excuse me. Yet know ye, O man, to him that overcometh free, will he be part of the pathway of light. For he, excuse me, for ye know, O man, in the end light must conquer, and darkness and night be banished from light. Listen, O man, and heed ye this wisdom. Even as darkness, so is the light. When darkness is banished and all veils are rended, out there shall flash from the darkness the light. Even as exist among men the dark brothers, so there exist the brothers of light. Antagonists they of the brothers of darkness, seeking to free men from the night. Powers have they, mighty and potent, knowing the law the planets obey, working they ever in harmony and order, freeing the man's soul from its bondage of night. Secret and hidden walk they also, known not are they to the children of men. Even have they fought the dark brothers, conquered and conquering time without end. Yet always light shall in the end be master, driving away the darkness of night. I, man, knowing, know ye this knowing, always beside thee walk the children of light. Masters they are of the sun power, ever unseen, yet the guardians of men. Open to all is their pathway, open to he who will walk in the night. Excuse me, will walk in the light. Free are they of the dark amante, free of the halls, reigns supreme. Sons are they and lords of the morning, children of light to shine among men. Like man are they, and yet unlike, never divided were they in the past. One has been, one have they been in oneness eternal throughout all space since the beginning of time. Up did they come in oneness with all, with the all one, up from the first space formed and unformed. Given to man have they secrets that shall guard and protect him from all harm. He who would travel the path of the master, for he must he be from the bondage of night. Conquer must he the formless and shapeless, conquer must he the phantom of fear. Knowing must he gain of all the se- gain of all of the secrets, travel the pathway that leads to the darkness, yet ever before him keep the light of his goal. Obstacles great shall he meet in the pathway, yet press on to the light of the sun. Hear ye, O man, the sun is the symbol of the light that shines at the end of thy road. Know to thee, give I the secrets, now to meet the dark power. Meet and conquer the fear from the night. Only by knowing, yet can ye conquer. Only by be knowing, can ye have light. Now I give unto thee the knowledge, known to the masters, the knowing that conquers all the dark fears. Use this, the wisdom I give thee. Master, thou shalt be of the brothers of the night. And when unto thee comes the feeling, drawing thee nearer to the darker gate, examine thy heart, and find it if the feeling thou hast has come from within, if thou shalt find the darkness thine own thoughts, banish them forth from the place in thy mind. Send through thy body a wave of vibration, irregular first and regular second, repeating time after time until free. Start the wave force in thy brain center. Direct it in the waves from thine head to thy foot. But if thou findest thy heart is not darkened, 
Be sure that a force is directed to thee. Only by knowing can thou overcome it. Only be wisdom can thou hope to be free. Knowledge brings wisdom, and wisdom is power. Attain, and ye shall have power over all. Over all. Seek ye first a place bound by darkness. Place ye a circle around about thee. Stand erect in the midst of the circle. Use thou this formula, and you shall be free. Raise thou thine hands to the dark space above thee. Close thou thine eyes and draw in the light. Call to the spirit of light through the space-time. Using these words, and thou shalt be free. Fill thou my body, O spirit of life. Fill thou my body with spirit of light. Come from, this fl- come from the flower that shines through the darkness. Come from the halls where the seven lords rule. Name them by name, I, the seven, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine. By their names I call them to aid me. Free me and save me from the darkness of night. Untana, Skortas, Shital, uh, Shital, excuse me, and Kayana, Haratal, Sanveta, Ardal, and I hope I didn't butcher that. By their names I implore thee, free me from darkness and fill me with light. Know ye, O man, that when ye have done this, ye shall be free from the fetters that bind ye. Cast off the bondage of the brothers of night. See ye not that the names have the power to free by vibration the fetters that bind use them at need to free thou thine brother so that he too may come forth from the night thou O man art thy brother's helper let him not lie in the bondage of night now unto thee i give i give i my magic take it and dwell on the pathway of light light unto thee life unto thee sun may thou be the cycle above and that's very beautiful it is <clears throat> And they I still about, try to rewrite as I read, so uh, my apologies on that one as I read. Um tend to do that. And I think anybody <laughs> who has ever read through this wants to rewrite it. Yeah, it's I just know. like an autopilot thing. I, I can't explain it. It's almost like I start to channel. I have to be very careful. <laughs> but very, very powerful. Go ahead. It is. It is. And I think a couple of things. One, he talks about space and space time and he talks about planes of um they come from another plane so mm-hmm. are we looking at entities from another plane or are we looking at our own emotions that come from another plane that create doubt and fear and anger and lust and avarice uh mm-hmm. you know I, i'm wondering i'm wondering if he's talking of dark energies, like, and he's not talking about demons. He's talking about dark energies. Um, I'm I'm wondering if it's if if coming from another plane is coming from in, inside of us, or if it's coming from a another plane of existence somewhere else that they've floated in. Mm-hmm. Do you get a feeling either way? Well, it's interesting because I see it more as a state of consciousness, but at the same time, it seems to me like they came from somewhere. So I'm looking at it as um, almost like a different space-time configuration, perhaps even. You know, where did they show up? Where did they really, really come from? And I don't really think he, he communicates that to some degree. But it is about state of consciousness in a sense. I mean, people can go dark or go light depending on their state of being to some degree. So I would say it could be a field of energy as well, a different uh, perception. Well, he talks about people... See. Who 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 appear to be shining light and yet have darkness within too. Yes. So, and that is so true. Would, oh, geez, yeah. Um, yeah, dark brightness. So he I, calls it. Yeah. Wow. Go ahead. So I, I and and that's a danger, and I think it's a danger everybody mm-hmm. has to watch for that that there are people that that purport to be beings of light, teachers of light, teachers of wisdom, teachers, you know all sorts of powerful people and and when you have people following you the 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 following energetic gives you greater power and and you do become powerful with that so mm-hmm. that so that i i'm wondering um again that 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 where does the where does the negative come from and it it did fit you know when i first heard it when i first read it when i heard you read it it felt like it was it was something coming at us from outside of our um, this plane, this dimension. Mm-hmm. That the you know there right. was stuff floating around out there that you know suddenly decided to come in and and 
and play with with our emotions and our our thoughts and our desires and and i mm-hmm. and I don't know which way it is it could be one or both but but if they come in to influence, it would seem to me they have to enter into you to influence and and therefore mm-hmm. you know in, in a way it this energy becomes a part of a person, and then that person manifests what that etheric energy couldn't manifest on its own, but mm-hmm. had to have a physical body to manifest. Yeah, and use them as a host. And, and, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's kind of where a lot of the evil in the world comes from, I, I suspect. Mm-hmm. But, but yes. you know, follow, following the path, following the darkness, following the sun, and I like the fact that, that it's the sun, it's the light, the that he does not become religious in any of this. He's talking mm-hmm, about exactly. the light, the sun, the force. And 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 in in many ways, you know, we are a part of that light and therefore, you know, are being drawn to it and and mm-hmm. work with it. Um it 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 was this is a very powerful chapter, I think. I, I Oh, I agree. The the other thing that, that I found I found really fascinating was he talked about drawing a circle and before you complete it, step into the center of it and then complete it. Mm-hmm. So is a circle part of the um the mysticism of of prayer of of striving is is there and and in i i it wasn't in what you read so it had to be in in the interpretation of it but it was very specific to um to draw a circle and before you complete it stand in the center of it and then complete it so that you had so in some way it's an energetic sealing of the energy around you so that nothing can get in yeah. but you can get out Right. You know, it kind of reminds me of the, the rituals I've done, you know, with the craft and, and doing any type of magic circle when you're doing circle cast. Similar in a sense, but the idea behind putting a protective shield in circle, a, a, like a, a field of energy between dimensions, so to speak. But, that, yeah, it's very, very interesting. Very, very interesting the way he um, communicates that. And especially when you think about, once again, when this was written. That, to me, is very, very interesting. Yeah, he... Um... Definitely powerful. He, he definitely, he, and he's written a lot more than I was aware of. So, you know, mm-hmm. we had talked earlier about going into some of his other stuff. But this is, um, this is channeled material. This is very much like Nostradamus's quatro, quatrains. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's when when I look at it. That's the feeling I get. And you know the quatrains people have tried to interpret for for ever since they were written, and this mm-hmm. material f- seems the same way, and it feels as though even if you take it paragraph by paragraph and try to dissect it 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 there's a message in its entirety, but if you go line by line, you don't get that message. So there's mm-hmm. a rhythm and a cadence to it that energetically touches um, levels of awareness within the individual um, reading it and seeing it. Agreed. And if if you look at the introduction someplace to this work, it talks about, you know, you don't have to believe it, but read it over and over and over again. And even though you don't, possibly at that moment believe it it gets inside of you and you suddenly begin to understand it and it works with your energetic mm-hmm. field i agree it's almost like a light language and that's what i notice it's different when i read it in loud out loud to people but if i'm actually reading quietly i could actually start to go into states of consciousness and actually see things and i'm sure you can do the same and probably the oh, listener. Yeah. So that's the thing about reading this quietly to yourself as well, because you'll get all kinds of downloads. I mean, my goodness, I, I literally have to focus. <laughs> so I apologize when I'm reading this because it's, uh, it's, it just puts me in another orbit sometimes. So it's very profound. Well, yeah, and, and a lot of the material, too, I think it's important to note. Um, he, was in, he was interpreting 
material, and I don't know what language it was written in, but he was interpreting it. it and and there are so, quite a few words that he, he is just in parentheses after, after it. Uh, there's no translation. So to, to hear either uh, you or I stumble over some of these words, it's it's um, it, it's an easy thing to do because you know it, they aren't pronounceable. Most of the yeah, my apologies about that. The names, <laughs> yeah, and normally I'm pretty good at reading, but this one is it's it's challenging in a sense because you're going into a different field of energy, and as you were saying, uh, it it really does uh, communicate on a different language. It's just a frequency that I notice, and it puts you in a whole different orbit. So, but it is um, beautiful. I mean, it's actually it's very very powerful. So, good stuff. I encourage everybody to read it, and I, I think they're getting something out of it tonight even, I'm sure, because I like the idea of uh, touching on, on what, he, what he's talking about or what he's uh, alluding to to some degree and seeing what other people think as well when they're reading it. Yeah, and I think the coolest part of that is that anybody reading it, and, and the book, um, just, just for those who are interested, the book that we both of us have been using is the Emerald Tablets of Toth, the anti uh, Atlantean, and it's um, translation and interpreted by Dr. Durrell, and it has Egyptian finger, uh, figures on the front of it, and and the the reason that this is such a cool book for this is that it has the absolute translation, and then it has his interpretation of the translation, so that it does like give you... Too. Yeah, it gives you more, it, it it helps you to understand a little bit. It's actually written a little more plainly, but I, I truly believe that there's something in the cadence of what he's written. And, you know, you, you read that part and then you read the interpretation and then you go back and read the other part again. And again, it's a matter of getting that rhythm into yourself and it helps to implant a message that, that um in, in the intro I wrote, you know, eyes to see and ears to hear, I truly believe that that hearing this internally, even if you're even if you're reading it to yourself, hearing that rhythm puts you in a place of openness to get a greater understanding to what the words are saying because what the words are saying and what you and I are talking about as far as what we think they mean there may be another whole level of understanding and energy, energy in in the rhythm that came from the reading of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it does have a certain cadence. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, it's, very, it's almost like a riddle beyond a riddle. It's very, very interesting. Well, well yeah, and, and what ancient, I mean, ancient wisdoms, weren't ancient wisdom one and ancient wisdom two. Here's the ancient wisdom, you know, blah, blah, blah. Ancient wisdoms mm-hmm. were meant to be found and interpreted according to the level of consciousness of the person who was seeking the information. Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. So, so, you know, I think you and I have very similar energy, energy so I think we probably would mm-hmm. be pretty much in the same spot as far as trying right. to understand it fr- from our own perspective but um, mm-hmm. were, were it my my cleaning lady or my garbage man or my sister or my mother or whoever, everybody is going to have a different perception as to what it means to them, because it will touch them in different ways. Which I, which is mm-hmm. such a profound, beautiful kind of magic that, that I think so. Doc, you know, the doctor Durrell was able to, and and just. Um, just and I'm and I'm not sure where the information comes from. I know I've read it in many places. It's not my own theory, but when when things were going south in Egypt, uh, the emerald tablets were copied and taken to um, three different locations. Um, one was in Egypt, one was in South America, and I can't remember where the third was. But this wisdom, this material has been buried in three separate places so that it, you know, it won't be totally lost from time. Mm-hmm. And that makes perfect Dr. Sense. Durrell took tablets, I think, from South America and took them back to Egypt and reburied them. Hmm. I think he, I Very think he replaced the ones at the, at the Sphinx. Uh, and, um, you know, he's, 
he didn't come clean with a lot of this stuff. So it, it's it's kind of hard to know exactly. Um, I he 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 created the White Brotherhood. He was the founder mm-hmm. of it, and um, part of their their purpose is to get this material out there to to people. But what I love is they don't push it. They don't publicize it. You have to be drawn to it and find it. And mm-hmm. that's yep. why I think it's it's so super that you decided to do this because hopefully it'll it'll um uh have some people seeking out some of this material to apply it to their own lives and see how it can help them or expand them or inform them or enlighten them. Um, mm-hmm. It, it tr- and, and this is this is this is not a, a long book. It's all of oh, did you ever see in the back all the ads? Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> in the book. I just flipped it back there. Yeah. Here is that. Oh yeah. No, I there. see it. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a long book. I encourage everybody to purchase a copy. I really do. Yeah, it, it's. I think they would really enjoy it. I'm trying to see how many pages it is. It's not even 100 books. It's about 80 pages long. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's perfect. And it's timeless. It's oh, like if you really geez, want to yeah. shift gears in your state of consciousness and go into a place that can potentially put you in another orbit, this is the, this is the book to read, in my opinion. Absolutely. And and the only yeah, bad totally. thing about it. They're, they're, the only bad thing about it is then you're going to want to talk to somebody about it, and there aren't a lot of people out there that have read the book, so you'll do like I do. I give it to my friends and say, and when you're done reading it, let's talk. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Well, they should have discussion groups. I know Billy Meyer material, material does that, you know, with the Billy Meyer stuff. So I think it's it's uh-huh. great to have a discussion about this work. Oh, yeah. And originally there were 12 tablets, Um and originally, only ten of them were translated because they felt that the the um, the other work was um, humanity wasn't ready for the other work. But this book does have the other tablets interpreted too. So um, we will get into it eventually as we go through the rest of this work. Mm-hmm. So yeah, ready for Beautiful. ready for six, seven. Yeah. We're Whatever. on tablet what? seven. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's go. We're, we're navigating there, the seven lords. Hark ye, O man, and list to my voice. Open my mind's space and drink of my wisdom. Dark is this pathway of light that ye travel, many the pitfalls that lie in thy way. Seek ye ever to gain greater wisdom. Attain, and it shall be light on the way. Open thy soul, O man, to the cosmic, and let it flow in and one with thy soul. Light is eternal, and darkness is fleeting. Seek ye ever, O man, for the light. Know ye ever, excuse me, know ye that ever as light fills thy, thy begin, darkness for thee shall soon disappear. Open thy souls to the brothers of brightness. Let them enter and fill thee with light. Lift up thine eyes to the light of the cosmos. Keep thou ever thy face to the goal. Only by gain, gaining the light of all wisdom art thou one with the infinite goal. Seek ye ever the oneness eternal. Seek ever the light into one. Hear ye, O man, listen to my voice, singing the song of light and and of life. Throughout all space, light is prevalent, prevalent, excuse me, encompassing all with its banners, its flames. Seek ye forever in the veil of the darkness. Somewhere ye shall surely find light, hidden and buried, lost to man's knowledge, deep in the finite, the infinite exists. Lost but existing, flowing, flowing through all things, living in all, in the infinite brain. In all space, there is only one wisdom. Through seeming decided, it is one with it is one in the one. All that exists comes forth from the light, and the light comes forth from the all. Everything created is based upon order. Laws rules the space where the infinite dwells. Forth from equilibrium came the great cycles, moving in harmony toward infinite, infinity's end. Know ye, O man, that far in the space time, infinity itself shall pass into change. Hear ye and list to the voice of wisdom. Know that all is of all evermore. Know that through time thou may pursue wisdom and find evermore light on the way. Know that through time thou may pursue wisdom and find evermore light on the way. 
and I, thou shall find that ever receding, thy shall, excuse me, thy goal shall elude thee from day unto day. Long, long time ago in the halls of Amente, I saw, stood before the lords of the cycles, mighty they in their aspects of power, mighty they in the wisdom unveiled. Led by the dweller, first did I see them, but afterwards free was I of their presence, free to enter their conclave at will. Oft did I journey down the dark pathway unto the hall where the light ever glows. Learned I of the masters of cycles, wisdom brought from the cycles above, manifest they in this cycle as guides of man to the knowledge of all. Seven are they, mighty in power, speaking these words to me, to men. Time after time stood I before them, listening to words that came not with sound. Once said they unto me, O man, wouldst thou gain wisdom? Seek for it in the heart of the flame. Wouldst thou gain knowledge of power? Seek ye in the heart of the flame. Wouldst thou would be one with the heart of the flame? Seek then within thine own hidden flame. Many the times spoke they to me, teaching me wisdom not of this world, showing me ever new paths to brightness, teaching me wisdom brought from above, given knowledge of operation, learning of law, the order of all. Spoke to me again the seven, saying, From far beyond time are we, come, O man, traveled we from beyond space-time, I from the place of infinity's end, when ye and all of, my, all of thy brethren were formless, formed forth, were we from the order of all, not as men are we, though once we too were as men, out of the great void where we formed forth in law in order by law. For now ye that which is formed truly is formless, having oh, having form only to thine eyes, and again unto me spoke the seven, saying, Child of the light, O soul, art thou free to travel the brightest path upward, until at last all ones become one. Forth we Fourth were we formed after our order, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Know ye that these are the numbers of cycles that we descend from unto man, each having here a duty to fulfill, each having here a force to control. Yet are we one with the soul of our cycle? Yet are we, yet are we too seeking a goal? Far beyond man's conception, infinity extends into a greater than all. They are in a time that is yet not a time we shall all become one with a greater than all. Time and space are moving in circles. Know ye their law, and ye too shall be free. I free, I free shall ye be to move through the cycles, past the guardians that dwell at the door. Then to me spoke he of nine, saying, Aeons and aeons have I existed, knowing not life and tasting not death. For know ye, O man, that far in the future life and death shall be one with the all each so perfected by balancing the other that neither exists in the oneness of all. In men of this cycle, the life force is rampant, but life in its growth becomes one with them all. Here I manifest in this your cycle, but yet I am there in your future of time. Yet to me, time exists not, for in my world, time exists not. More formless are we. Life have we not been, not but yet have existence, fuller and greater and freer than thee. Man is a flame bound to a mountain, but we in our cycle shall ever be free. Know ye, O man, that when ye have progressed into the cycle that lengthens above, life itself will pass to the darkness, and only the essence of soul shall remain. Then to me spoke the Lord of the eight, saying, All that ye know is but part of little. Not as ye, not as yet have ye touched on the great far... Whoops, where'd I go? Hold on, I just scrolled somewhere. Oh, goodness. This is terrible. <laughs> Excuse me, everybody. I just went some, I just like totally jumped my um, thing on here. So uh, you have to bear with me for a second. Gosh, I jumped really, really far ahead. Uh, that's, well, that's. Want nasty. me to read what you seek? Yeah, well, can you? And I'll try to find it. Thank you. Okay. Not as yet have he touched upon the great. Far, <clears throat> far out in space, when I, far out in space where light reigns supreme, came I un, into the learn, into the light. Sorry, framed was I also, but not as ye are. Body of light was my formless form forward. Know I not life, and know I not death. Yet master am I of all that exists. 
Seek you to find a path through the barriers. Tread the road that leads to the light. Have to excuse me. I don't have big glasses okay. on. Travel the road that leads to the light. Okay. Is that where you are? Yeah. Okay. You can have it or I can. <laughs> I think I found no, go it. Go ahead. My, my glasses aren't good enough for this. And my apologies, too, because I was um, I'm obviously reading this online and I scrolled and it hit really fast on my computer. So my apologies. So, okay. So travel the road that leads to the light. Okay. Spoke again to me, the nine saying, seek ye to find the path to beyond. Not impossible is it to grow to a consciousness above. For when two have become one, and one has become the all, know ye the barrier has lifted, and ye are made free of the road. Grow thou from form to the formless, free may thou be of the road. Thus through ages I listened, learning the way to the all. Now lift I my thoughts to the all thing, list ye and hear when it calls. O light, all pervading, one with all and all with one, flow thou to me through the channel. Enter thou so that I may be free. Make me one with the all soul, shining from the blackness of night. Free let me be of all space time, free from the veil of the night. I, a child of light, command free from the darkness to be. Formless am I to the light soul, formless yet shining with light. Know I the bonds of the darkness must shatter and fall before light. Now give I this wisdom, free may ye be, O man, living in light and in brightness. Turn not, thy, turn not thy face from the light. Thy soul dwells in realms of brightness. Ye are a child of the light. Turn thy thoughts inward, not outward. Find thou that light soul within. Know that thou art the master. All else is bright from within. Grow thou to realms of brightness. Hold thou thy thought of the light. Know thou art with one, one with the cosmos, a flame and a child of the light. Now to, ge- now to thee gave I warning. Let not the thought turn away. Know that the brightness flows to the body, thy body, for I turn not to the dark brothers that come from the brothers of black, but keep thine eyes ever lifted, thy soul in tune with the light. Take ye this wisdom and heed it. Listen to my voice and obey. Follow the pathway to brightness, and thou shalt be one with the way. Very nice. Sorry about that snafu, everybody. And thank no, you, Barbara. Well, that happened. <laughs> Yes, it's um, spontaneous. Was, Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and, and you do get to a point where you think you know what's coming, and it's not. Um, mm-hmm. I, I there was one line here that I that I did kind of mark. Deep in the finite, the infinite exists. So mm-hmm. you know that's a wonderful play on words. Yeah. You know, no matter no matter how small something is, the infinite is beyond is within it. And and it does talk here. It feels as though it's talking. It, it, it says it a number of times, which of course we've said we've said to people that we've worked with countless times. Um, your answer lies within. Seek inside. Mm-hmm. It's you know the the truth is there. The wisdom is there. It's basically saying that if you're following somebody else's light, you're not on your own pathway. Mhm. I agree. And 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 so so it's a matter of it it it's hammered here and it's hammered so hard that that you you have to, you know, step back and say, you know, okay, I got it. Um it it it's really saying to you that that the answers are within. There's a master within. You have a spirit inside of you that has all the answers. It has the map. And and if you follow that map, you can't go wrong. And I I agree. What what really impresses me is that sometimes your pathway leads you through darkness, but it leads you through it to experience it, correct? Not to become it. And you know, if 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 you if you get off way in in many many times many ways, you're supposed to. But you're supposed to find the light there and then go, you know, let it enlighten you. Um, it, I just, it, it, this was so profound to me because we all have the power to do so many things, and and yet we all we give our power away to other people so often, and mm-hmm. you know, it's 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 basically, you know, you are 
we are chi- children of the light. I don't think he ever says that, but that's that's an implication I got. That's mm-hmm. that's my those are my words, not his. But yeah, I think he said a child it, of light. But yeah, okay. So it, it's you know you you've got everything you need. It's sort of like you've been given the seeds to the to to a, a blessed garden. And it's um, it's up to you to plant it and nurture it and let it grow. And and that it isn't necessary. I mean, I'm not telling people not to have gardens because gardens are magical. But but we're talking about a garden of wisdom and knowledge you carry within. Mm-hmm. And the seeds are all there. You just need to nurture them with your inner light. And so many people are looking all over the place for for somebody to give them the answers and they have all of them inside of themselves. At least that's Mm -hmm. what that passage said to me. You know, it was, it, it, it it basically was, you know, don't, um, don't look to others. Don't let the darkness get to you. Um, go within and find the light and then, you know, blow it up good. But right. Exactly. I agree. I think a lot of it is that some people don't realize that they they have the ascended master or master consciousness within and sometimes it takes someone to facilitate or be a mirror to that to, to show them. But, yeah, I, I, it's all there. Everybody has the data within. And when he talks about, about, you know, getting to a point where you don't know life and you don't know death, to me that was saying that at some point you will, you will evolve to a place where you are pure spirit and don't need to have physical form any longer and therefore... You are you. I mean, we are eternal. Um, our spirits eternal. Our bodies, you know, give out after a while. But, but, it's sort of like you. The spirit comes back here time and time again, in order to have physicality. In order to go through some of these, I, I think each life is an initiation. Mhm. Yeah, it certainly seems that way. <laughs> yeah, yes, it does. It's a good way to look at it. <laughs> And and you know if you if you look at it that way when you think of all you've learned and how you've grown and hopefully how you've touched other people's lives then then it's a it's kind of like I'm doing good and and you know mm-hmm. I think that's what that's what Nightlight is about that's what this show is about it's sort of helping people find the seeds they carry and and to remind them that. Nobody else can give them the road map or the way. It's within them. My mm-hmm. way isn't your way. Your way isn't somebody else's way. And and right. it's sort of like, you know, I, 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 I said to people often, don't follow me. I don't know where I'm going. And <laughs> well, do you? Well, you know, I think it's a personal journey. I think it's singular. I look at it like singular, singular consciousness merged with source creation, and we all have our own independent path. And sometimes, in my okay. opinion, I think we we enlighten others to follow a course, not the same course, but something that awakens them in a resonance effect, so that they can grow and evolve on their own path. So that's the way I see it. Uh-huh. But um, to yeah, me, absolutely. I just feel like my compass is connected to creation, and I follow that course uh, through intuition, among other things. But yeah. And I think it was beautiful. What's nice is that sometimes people just, they just need a reminder, you know? And I think mm-hmm. this book is a reminder. Oh, absolutely. And, and I think sometimes we're meant to wait, too. Sometimes mm-hmm. we're given times and periods when it's, you know, reflect, um, look for new ways to to express yourself. Look for, I, I think creation and creativity have a great deal to do with finding the light within that's my oh, own personal too. belief yeah. system, but mm-hmm. um, but you know, Toth, Toth was the god of writing, magic, wisdom, and the moon. So you take all of those and put them together, and and it all is a a creative, magical ride we're on. Mm-hmm. And 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 you know, it's 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 not something that you have to um, uh pay money to do it's a matter of practice within yourself and 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 again i love the fact that there is no religious connotation to any of this and so Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what your belief system is it fits with everything yes it's universal language yeah i love it 
Yeah. It Definitely. is universal and, and it, it's cosmic and and it takes us from the fact that we are dwelling on a planet and therefore have a physical reality, but it takes us to the possibility and to the probability that there is something that is more cosmic out there that we are stretching for and reaching for that, you know, is is even more amazing than some of the most amazing things that have happened here on the Earth plane. So it's a, mm-hmm. it's a very exciting journey. Um, it is. I agree. Very nice. Okay. You're ready? Shall I continue? Yes. I try not yes. to scroll fast. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. Uh, run, no, no, I, run I don't have my other glasses. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I put you on the spot. I, I was like, oh, no, where to go? Uh, we're going to the key of mystery right now. This is Tablet 8. Unto thee, O man, have I given my knowledge. Unto thee have I given of light. Hear ye now and receive my wisdom, brought from space planes above and beyond. Know as man am I, for free have I become of dimensions and planes, and each take I on a new body, and each I change in my form. Now know I know, excuse me, know I know that the formless is all there is. Of form. Great is the wisdom of the seven. Mighty are they from beyond. Manifest they through their power, filled by force from beyond. Hear ye these words of wisdom. Hear ye and make them thine own. Find in them the formless. Mystery is but hidden knowledge. Know and ye shall unveil. Find the deep buried wisdom and the master of darkness and light. Deep are the mysteries around thee. Hidden the secrets of old. Search through the keys of my wisdom. Surely shall ye find the way. The gateway to power is secret, but he who attains shall receive. Look to the light, O my brother. Open and ye shall receive. Press on through the valley of darkness. Overcome the dweller of night. Keep over thine eyes of the light plain, and thou shalt be one with the light. Man is in process of changing to forms that are not of this world. Grows he in grows he is time to the formless, a plane on the cycle above. Know ye ye must become formless before ye are with the light. List ye, O men, to my voice, telling of pathways to light, showing the way of attainment when ye shall be one with the light. Search ye the mysteries of earth's heart, learn of the law that exists, holding the stars in their balance by the force of the primordial mist. Seeking ye the flame of the earth's life, bathe in the glare of its flame. Follow the three-cornered pathway until thou too are art aflame. Art aflame. Speak thou in words without voice. To those who dwell down below, enter the blue litten temple and bathe in the fire of all life. O man, thou art complex, a being of earth and of fire. Let thy flame shine out brightly, be thou only the fire. Wisdom is hidden in darkness, when lit by the flame of the soul. Find thou the wisdom, and be light-born, a son of the light without form. Seek thee ever more wisdom. Find it in the heart of the flame. Know that only by striving and light pour into thy brain. Know that I have spoken with wisdom. Listen to my voice and obey. Tear, Tear open the veils of the darkness. Shine a light on the way. Speak I of ancient Atlantis. Speak of the days of the kingdom of shadows. Speak of the coming of the children of shadows. Out of the great deep were they called by the wisdom of earthmen, called for the purpose of gaining great power. Far in the past, before Atlantis existed, men there were who delved into darkness, using dark magic, calling up beings from the great deep below us. Forth came they into this cycle. Formless were they of another vibration, Existing unseen by the children of earthmen, only through blood could they have formed being. Only through man could they have lived in the world. In ages past were they conquered by masters, driven below to the place where they, whence they came. But some there were who remained, hidden in spaces and plains unknown to man. Lived, in, lived they in Atlantis as shadows, but at times they appeared among men. I, when the blood was offered, for they came they to dwell among men. In the form of man they amongst us, but only to sight were they as our men, 
serpent-headed when the glamour was lifted, but appearing to man as men among men, crept they into the councils, taking forms that were like unto men, slaying by their arts the chiefs of the kingdoms, taking their form and ruling over man. Only by magic could they be discovered. Only by sound could their faces be seen. Sought they from the kingdom of shadows to destroy man and rule in his place. But know ye the masters were mighty in magic, able to lift the veil from the face of the serpent, able to send him back to his place. Came they to man and taught him the secret, the word that only a man can pronounce. Swift then they lifted the veil from the serpent and cast him forth from the place among men. Yet be, be aware, beware, the serpent still liveth in a place that is open at times to the world. Unseen they walk among thee, in places where the rites have been said. Again, as time passes onward, shall they take the, res- the semblance of men, called many, they be by the master who knows the white or the black, but only the white master may control and bind them while in the flesh. Seek not the kingdom of shadows, for evil will surely appear. For only the master of rightness shall conquer the shadow of fear. Know ye, O my brother, that fear is an obstacle great. Be master of all in the brightness. The shadow will soon disappear. Hear ye and heed my wisdom. The voice of light is clear. Seek not the valley of shadow, and light will only appear. List ye, O man, to the, deep, to the depth of my wisdom. Speak I of knowledge hidden from man. Far have I been on my journey through space-time, even to the end of space of the cycle. I glimpsed, I glimpsed the hounds of the barrier, lying in wait for he who would pass them. In that space where time exists not, faintly I sensed the guardians of cycles. Move they only through angles. Free are they not of the curved dimensions. Strange and terrible are the hounds of the barrier. Follow they consciousness to the limits of space. Think not to escape by entering your body. For follow they fast the soul through angles. Only the circle will give you protection. Save from the claws of the dwellers in in angles. Once in a time past, I approached the great barrier and saw on the shores where time exists not the formless forms of the hounds of the barrier. I, hiding I hiding in the midst beyond time, I found them, and they, scenting me afar off, raised themselves and gave the great bell cry that could be heard from cycle to cycle and moved through space toward my soul. Fled I then, fast before them, back from the time's unthinkable end, but ever after me pursued they, moving in strange angles not known to man. I, on the gray shores of the time spaces, end, found I the hounds of the barrier, ravening for the soul who attempts the beyond. Fled I through circles back to my body, fled and fast, after me they followed. I, after me, the devourers followed, seeking through angles to devour my soul. I know ye, man, that the soul who dares the barrier may be held in bondage by the hounds from beyond, beyond time, held till this cycle is completed, and left behind when the consciousness leaves entered I my body created the circles that know not angles created the form that from my form was formed made my body into a circle and lost the pursuers in the circle of time but even yet when free from my body cautious ever must I be not to move through angles else my soul may never be free know ye the hounds of the barrier move only through angles and never through curves of space only by moving through curves can ye escape them for in angles they will pursue thee O man heed ye my warning seek not to break open the gate to beyond few there are who have succeeded in passing the barrier to the great to the greater light that shines beyond for know ye ever the dwellers seek such souls to hold in their thrall listen O man and heed ye my warning seek ye to move not in angles but curves and if while free from, my, from thy body, hearest the sound like the bay of a hound, ringing clear and bell-like through thy being, flee back to thy body through circles, penetrate not the midst, midst mist before. When thou hast entered the form thou hast dwelt in, use thou the cross and the circle combined. Open my mouth, open thy mouth, and use thou my voice, thy voice. Utter the word, and thou shalt be free. Only the one who who of light has the fullest, can hope to pass by the guards of the way 
and then must he move through strange curves and angles that are formed in direction not known to man. Not, yeah, not known to man. List ye, O man, and heed ye my warning. Attempt not to pass the guards on the way. Rather should ye seek to gain of thine own light and make thyself ready to pass on the way. Light is, is thine ultimate end. O my brother, seek and find ever the light on the way. That's pretty powerful. No kidding. Um, yeah. I think a number of things, two things that really, you know, jump out at me and, and you know, I, 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 I kind of wish Doral hadn't passed away because, you know, I have some questions. Um, well, you can channel him. Thought, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't let that stop well, you, Barbara. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you know, you know, with channeling, you can't exactly, it's not like a phone call. You can't, you know, say, hey, you know, Paige, Dr. Durrell, I'd like to talk to him. Um, mm-hmm. So that, that would be nice. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, if I was going to have a spirit guide, he would be a good choice. Yeah, um, it would be very interesting. But, but but back to this, this part that, that gave me, you know, I sat here thinking, wow, look at this, you know. Become one with other dimensions in different bodies, in different forms, in different planes. Mm-hmm. Inferring that the spirit, which is my what he calls the soul, is what I call the spirit, the, you know, that which is eternal. So that it, it's, he's saying that, that though... In this in this form, I, I my spirit this time has a has a human form, but in uh, in other incarnations it it didn't have um, the physicality I have now. It had a different shape, a different form, and and a different plane and a different dimension. So he's saying that that when when you cross over, when you when you go into the spirit realm. And return, you don't necessarily have to come back to Earth, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, exactly. So that you could be, you know, in some other plane dimension. You could be a green blob and have an incarnation there. I, I, I find that, you know, everybody thinks that, that we keep this shape forever and we haven't had this shape forever and we will not have this shape forever. This is... This is uh, this lifetime. It's kind of like um, it's your winter coat. Do you remember when you were really, really little? Every winter you had to have a new coat because you'd grown. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like the spirit. You know, every lifetime mm-hmm. is something new, is something different. Sometimes mm-hmm. earthbound. Mm-hmm. Sometimes right. you know. Well, what's that saying? A star bound to a body. I like that saying. Yeah. 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 That's how I see us star beings in bodies, suits. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. But what really sticks out is the, uh, you know, it's it's re- interesting when you talk about the barrier and, and what is your perception of the barrier? What do you think that is? Well, it almost sounded like the gates of hell. And mm-hmm. you know, with the with you know the the what three headed dog, um, whose name I can't remember. It was right here. Yeah, it's 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 almost as though going to somewhere where we're not we're not ready to go but i think at the same time what what was fascinating in that same in that same place was um that 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 darkness could only follow through angles not circles mm-hmm. so was he saying walk in circles or not walk in straight lines i mean that that to me was a little confusing. I, I I understood the fact that he was giving us, you know, curved lines, flowing lines, circles, elliptical, right. whatever, um, is really the way to get to where you're going instead of angular. Um, right. And I, I'm not. Sure, and also, I'm not sure. Yeah. Go ahead. I I don't know what he meant. No. No. I was just gonna say. You know, what I see is like portals. So spheres are portals, circles, you know, portals. Um, so oh. that would make it easy for navigation. And right angles, is that what he's referring to? I mean, yeah, it's interesting. I'm not sure. I'd have to really like dive into that and think about that. 
But to me, it seems more appropriate to navigate through space through portals and stargates that are sphere related, right? We see orbs and such. Uh So that would kind of make sense. Well, when you consider the planets have a, are either, you know, elliptical, they're spinning in circles, but not perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, they rotate in the solar system, but it's not perfect. Mm-hmm. But but they are curved lines. They are not, you know, they don't go a certain distance and then make a sharp right-hand turn. And maybe could that even, oh, I wonder, could that, this is just a thought. I'll probably talk it out and then change my mind. But <laughs> could it be that this has something to do with our ability to reason? Mm. That if we follow a flow of wisdom through our consciousness, it will lead us to where we need to be. But if mm-hmm. we take right angles, if we doubt, if we change our mind, if we go in another direction then we can totally be lost and not find our way back. Correct. That's that's pretty good. You know, I'm also thinking about why does a pyramid come in when I'm thinking of right angles? I don't know why. Well, it's not it right structure angles. related. Well, the Great Pyramid is a 52-degree angle. Um, mm-hmm. Did he say something about pyramids, or did you just think about pyramids? No, I don't know why it just comes in. It's just coming in. I don't know why. Uh, And, yeah, it's just something about that, maybe the construction or something connected to. But you're right. uh, I don't think there's a right angle associated with that. or could be wrong. But, well, I'm just thinking more um, on that scale. But I like your your theory. could be about energy alone. And and if you stop and think about um, curves and whatever – they do flow, and and if you are stopping and going at a right angle or another direction, it slows you down. It confuse, confuses you. Yeah, yeah, it's a sharp turn. And it, can be. It, it and if you go at even a ninety degree angle, you are stopping the flow, and then starting it in another direction, and then stopping the flow and going in another direction. So your flow isn't continuous, and you're not connected to the source anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's an interesting way to see that. I don't know why I keep thinking about ships when I when they're when he's talking about this too. And it's almost like you know how you see not that the triangles were around back in that timeline, but in my sense is you know I'm just thinking of ships and navigation for some reason or another. But I think it can go in so many different formulas. You know, it's very very interesting. And then another thing that comes out is the, uh, the rep- well, it's not reptilian, but he speaks about the, the serpent. And uh, that, to me, is very interesting as well. Yeah, because, um, well, serpents used to be connected to wisdom, but then, you know, you, you also have the Garden of Eden serpent, and <laughs> and you get into reptilians, but this was before reptilians, I think. So, um, so I, I'm wondering... Um, and um, you know, it's a terrible thing to say, but there was a um, a Doctor Who episode where the aliens came in and took the place of the humans in places mm-hmm. of power. And mm-hmm. and um, and uh, you know, I, I immediately you know went to that you know talk about being spiritual and then going to Doctor Who, but um, but I think this happens today, and I think that, that there are people, and, and I'm not getting political, but there are people who have power who have lost their souls. Mm-hmm. And, I agree. And the, and the darkness has taken over, and they no longer are, are, are enlightened inside of themselves. And, and in a way, they have signed their soul away. They have, they have signed into the darkness. You know, the power gives them... The power gives them, um, I don't know, an energetic that um, brings in money, and money is power, and then there's a hunger for more, and and you lose sight of the pathway that your spirit is on this lifetime. And I think that, and and here's where I see the difference between soul and spirit. 
I, I think in those cases, the spirit leaves the body, but the soul is still there. And so the body is animated by the energy of the negative and, and the soul, the body is still living, but the spirit has probably sat this one out. Mm-hmm. And, and there are there are people in, in this life that over time, it, it to me seems as though the darkness has taken them over and their spirit is gone. And, and there are people that I don't believe have a spirit, but they've, they've got a life force and they've got a soul and they are living mm-hmm. in a lifetime. But But the spirit is no longer there. The spirit has checked out and said, you know, I'll come catch you next time. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so too. I think it evacuates to some degree. Yeah, so that makes perfect sense. I think some people are just hosts for whatever entity control or whatever decides to take in, you know, take a take a seat within. So, but you see it. I see it too. Well, yeah, you have, definitely. you have, you know, they they talk about the darkness, the the dark brotherhood who comes who comes from other realms. Um, it it could be what what some people have called, you know, the egregore energy too that that comes into this. It, it's an energy, but it can take on either a positive, positive or a negative force. And mm-hmm. if it takes, it's easier to be evil than it is to be good. Yep. That Seems like it for some people. But I, I don't, for me, it's not. I mean, I don't know. But yeah, I think a lot of people just choose the easy path. I guess. It's very interesting. Well, yeah. I, I think that that you know I I because a lot of this he's talking about it feels as though he's talking about the etheric body the etheric part of our soul and spirit not necessarily mm-hmm. the 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 uh, physical mundane bodies that we now inhibit he's talking about on another plane almost as though um, he stepped into a another dimension talking about. I mean, certainly the hounds and things like that, mm-hmm. and and that would that would make sense to me that if you're in mm-hmm. the flow, negative energy can't touch you, and and mm-hmm. doesn't even see you because you are so focused on being in the flow that the that the probability that there is darkness doesn't exist any longer. Mm-hmm. And when you stop and think and question and wonder, that opens. It, it's sort of like it, it's an it's a flow of energy. And when you stop that flow, you open the door for something else to step in. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, you probably changed your vibrational field too. I think that has something to do with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it makes, it makes a lot of sense to me. So it's a good idea not to stop your flow, everybody. Make sure you keep flowing. <laughs> right. Be- and because I keep that's when... The firm of... Go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. No, I was thinking, of, is it the firmament? Is that the, the thing I'm thinking of, the boundary? Yeah. I don't know why that comes in also. I don't, I mean, I don't know if it even has a correlation or not. But for some reason, it just seems, seems like it's there. I don't know why. Something I'll have to just really dive into. Well, hmm. what does the firmament, firmament represent to you? Well, to me, it's it's a boundary. It's a boundary between different worlds, you know. Uh-huh. That's the way I see it, if I'm looking at it on a cosmic level. Yeah. But it also... Or, go ahead. <laughs> no, you go ahead. It's your thoughts. No, I'm going to ask you it. real quick. Do you remember the last time we had a conversation? I don't know if it was you or not. Was it you that told me that Antarctica was... Uh, at once where the pyramids were? Um, the the continent of Antarctica, um, yes, when, when the pole shifts happened, Antarctica moved up to where the pyramids were and, you know, everything shifted around. It's really, the, some of the shifts have been quite profound. Well, that's a big deal, if you ask me. I think that's a huge deal. <laughs> so maybe that's what I'm looking at. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it 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 took it took place over millions of years, but yes, that it did at one time. That's but uh, it's still energy. You know, it's still energetic absolutely. overlays. I'm just looking at it on a big, you know, on a different field of energy. You know. Uh huh. 
not to digress, but I just think there's a correlation there for sure. Well, there there may well be. It is a firmament to me is where the source is. It's sort of like the gate to eternity. Mm-hmm. And in, in order to go through it, you have to be worthy. Mm-hmm. And and that doesn't mean I think that the one thing that so many people um, are misinformed on is that being being ready doesn't necessarily mean you know you 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 do just goody goody stuff all your life. There's there's something with the development of your soul and your spirit that there, there's a a purpose here. And and it isn't the kind that that anybody can look at and say, oh, they're doing well on their purpose. Um, it's following your dreams. It's following your bliss. It's allowing yourself to be guided by by spirit within you, as opposed to trying to figure out what would make you holier than thou, so that you can you know skate into the through the golden gates, uh, you know, in, in a Ferrari. Um, it's it's something very very simple and pure, and and most people aren't even you know looking at that. They're looking, you know what they're doing? They're looking for stuff that other people will look at and say, oh, isn't that a holy person? And mm-hmm. and they're not. Right. You know, it's yeah. It's a it's a sense of inner cosmetic. being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's yeah, what he's talking about here. It's it's kind of like, and again, he's sending everybody inside themselves. He's he's not sending you outside yourself. He said it's it's an amazing journey internally, and mm-hmm. when, when you and it, there's a flow to it. And once you hit in that flow, um, so many people, you know, using I'm using the. The term flow, and it, it it immediately I get I see like a river and stuff, not not a river, mm. uh, a, a stream. And mm-hmm. what's fa- what's fascinating to me is that 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 current, that flow of light, you know, has boulders in it. There are places where you can, you know, get nudged in one way or another. But but the important thing is that you go with the flow. And if you try mm-hmm. to paddle upstream because you think, think, that's where you belong, then you're definitely going to wear yourself out, and eventually the flow will carry you forward. So it's sort of like thinking gets in the way of the spirit wisdom coming through. Mm-hmm. Right, you have to get the personality out of the way to some degree. Mm-hmm. Yep, makes sense. Oh, and the and the Going. ego, and the mm-hmm. somewhere right. the ego's in all of this, but it it oh, it yeah. just it, and that could be part of the darkness because mm-hmm. you know the ego the ego only has um, this lifetime to draw from, and the spirit has all of eternity to draw from. But if the ego decides to take control and tell you what you think you should do. The, and and you know when the when the term think comes into the conversation, you're in the wrong place. Mm-hmm. So it's a matter of feeling, not thinking. Mm-hmm. So so what would you suggest to people who are listening and interested in this work, this material, that they do to find more information on it and stuff like that? The book itself. Well, no, I mean, you know, there are a lot of people listening that have never heard of the Emerald Tablets, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And and right. be fascinated by the work and, and the material. Um, this material, the Emerald Tablets have been around since the 8th century, or knowledge of them. And and mm-hmm. um, people have tried to interpret them, and, and the the one thing everybody agrees on is it's the as above, so below. And when you think of all of this that is written, there is a cosmic level of it, and then there is a physical level of it. And they're they're all mixed together in, in this prose that can be so frustrating and yet so pretty. 
Mm-hmm. Because yeah, he's talking. He, yeah, he and he's talking of of the physical level, and then suddenly he's out of body and floating in the stars. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Very frustrating. Um, so, but there are a lot of books written on on the Emerald Tablets, and all of them have value and worth. And 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 it's. I think it it becomes a handbook for personal development, and if you mm-hmm, look I at agree. it, if you look at it as kind of a handbook for personal development and how you live your life and what's going on in your life and how you're dealing with things and you know try not to analyze it too much but to flow with it but to understand that that there like you said there are many different levels of it and and interpretation is really um, important. Mm-hmm. So don't, but but don't drive yourself crazy because the more you are open to where the words take you, they'll take you there if you let them. I agree. I mean, I it's kind of like how... a ritual. I mean, to yeah. me, it feels like a ritual. Every time I read it, I, I think I mentioned that before, and there's a priestess in me. I think that's one of the reasons. But none, nonetheless, it's like I just start streaming, or you go into an altered space, and I think reading this is like a meditation. But then it becomes a formula for ritual. And not that if anybody wants to do a ritual with it, but you're going to wind up being in, in the halls of Amente. I mean, seriously. So it will take you on a journey. There's no doubt about that. And I think that this particular book, the one we're going through right now, is the best translation, in my opinion. Um, that's just my, uh-huh. my two cents on that. But I would encourage people to read it, but also use it like a, um, like, like a meditation to some degree and see where it takes them. Well, yeah, I totally agree. I think that... that I know after we after we end up talking about you know this material for two hours and then you know I find my dreams are very strange. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's it's like you should sleep okay, good, I don't know. Who knows? You'd probably be busy in your dream time. <laughs> well, yeah. I I I think it it brings home the fact that we have so much inside of us. And and yes. so this book was written 100 years ago. Uh, the tablets themselves, thousands of years ago. And and you know, is there is there purpose? It, and there is purpose to it because if you if you read the intro, it says you know you don't have to believe, just read it, because it will start to unlock things inside of you, and that's true you'll find that your perceptions change, your attitudes change. And you can either say it's because you're growing and wiser, or you can say this book helped to unlock things. Any way you go, it's fine. It doesn't matter which way it is. If if it has helped you to grow and understand and evolve, then then it you know, it's sort of like our work here is done. Um mm-hmm. and, and you know there's there's a whole bunch of material out there on, on Trismegistus, which is Hermes, and some of it says he wasn't a person, he was a philosophy. I, I personally believe there was a Hermes Trismegistus. Um, but that's me. Mm-hmm. And and everyone's entitled to their own opinion, and everybody's right. Whatever you actually yes, believe in is, is absolutely right. And, and I... I feel I have the right to tell you the two that my opinion could easily change tomorrow. So right tonight, this is my opinion. <laughs> I well, could have good. an it epiphany means you're tonight. And <laughs> yeah, but but um, I still would love to see another channel write this work. And well, I still and, think, but you, perhaps that's you. <laughs> I was thinking I think it would we be talked you. About that. Me, yeah, I don't well, know. I mean, I see things, but I'm telling you, and I'm sure you do too, because I know how psychic you are. But when I read this stuff, I start getting all kinds of data because I really have to focus when I'm reading it. So maybe, maybe I can at some point, but you know, that's just the way I see it. So who knows? But I can certainly try to interpolate what I see. And if it <laughs> resonates with people. I think, you know, you could do the same thing. It's fascinating though. It's a, it's a very cool thing. And it's one of my favorites, I must say. And I really appreciate you being here with me tonight to share this data and uh, just just to kind of brainstorm some information back and forth. It's really been great. Well, it's yeah, you know, and and what what happens is, you know, if you get two people together doing this, then 
their energies blend and you have an, an, an energy that is greater than the two parts that put it together, which mm-hmm. is so great. And and I think and I just noticed that there's supplementary tablets here too. So, um, did you ever read the the supplementary tablets? You know, I don't think I have, so I'll have to get into that as well. I might Next have, but time. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't think I ever did either. I think I went through the the twelve tablets and said, "Okay, I'm done." But it just occurred to me. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny. You discover stuff when it's time to discover it. Mm-hmm. And there's there's yes. um ooh there's the law of cause and effect and the key of prophecy there's there's a lot of material here so I think we're going to be going for a while on this. I was going to say we only got to tablet nine. <laughs> we're not even. We're, we're going to be at tablet nine. So yeah. Nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, I love it. That's uh, fun. No, it's it's amazing material, and it I think it's. It's a good time in in humanity's journey to to get this information out there again for and and I'd love I don't know where for the eyes to see and ears to hear came from but um it it feels like it's a time where people are looking for greater insight into their own journeys and this does give it to you, even though it sounds confusing at first. Solaris and I have been through material like this for decades and decades and decades, and we're confused. So, Well, you know how fast I normally read, right? And you know how slow I'm reading on this. <laughs> I know. It's so, definitely it's slowing down. <laughs> but Oh, I, I've had, but, yeah. <laughs> but everybody will understand it at their own level, which is which is really cool. Some people will... You know, eat it up and just, just it'll, it'll just feel so right to them, and they understand it totally. And then other people will read through it and think this man was on drugs, and and uh, you know, it's it's, and yet it will enlighten anybody who goes through it. It causes you to think, and that's that's what I love about it. No matter mm-hmm. what you, no matter what, it will make you think about your spirit, your soul, your journey. And I agree. Is this the story, you know, is this the story of Atlantis and Toth? Maybe. Maybe it's also a map for you for your own journey through this lifetime and lifetimes yet to come. Maybe it's telling I you think, about yeah. your journey. It's definitely an activator. There's no doubt about that. It'll definitely give um, what I call cellular recall whether people resonate with the information itself or just go into that stream of consciousness, it's going to open some doors, which I think are good. Oh yeah. Uh, And he's, he's, you know, he's always promoting the light, you know, stay in the light, stay in the light. And I think that's the whole idea behind it in the dark times, you know, be the light. Uh And of course in this world, I think you're right. This, this timeline we're on right now, this is an ideal time to kind of switch gears and go into this, um, the Emerald tablets for a while and, and live into that world for a while because it will really help calibrate you to what's, what's going on on a bigger scale. And there is, you know, and I I think that, um, you know, they, they, they say, you know, if enough people pray, something will happen. And, and, and there's, there's validity to that, but, but there's, there's also, if enough people are working on themselves to get the light inside of themselves more, more brightly shining, then, it influences everything. It does chase out darkness. If enough, and you don't have to band together to do it. It helps. I mean, it's it's lots of mm-hmm. reading through material like this and talking in a group is fabulous. But mm-hmm. but on a personal level, if you if you brighten and clarify your own light, then anybody you touch is touched by that light. And and mm-hmm. so. So, you know, a a term that was hackneyed and and thrown around, I am a light bearer. Well, don't be a light bearer. Be a light sharer. And you don't have to talk it. You don't have to preach. You don't have to testify. By your acts, you will be known. And and it's Mm -hmm. true. I mean, the kinder you are, you know, kindness just oozes out of you. The, The wiser you are. It oozes out. You don't have to preach it. If you start to preach it, then you're on the wrong track. <laughs> Turn around, go back. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Light but, to um, light. 
Yeah, I mean, you and I are just sharing our own philosophies here. We're we're, we're digging into something that both of us have looked into oh, for a long time. Mm-hmm. And and actually, I think we've come t- tonight. I think uh, there were some aha moments here for me, and and I got to admit, the circle and the straight line thing that was that made sense to me finally. Mm-hmm. And I would say I would say that I have read through this material <clears throat> easily a hundred or more times, and I think you probably have too. Mm-hmm. And 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 so, so it's a matter of you know when there's one of those aha moments, it's like, well, this makes sense. Why didn't I see that the first time? And maybe you weren't ready. Maybe I wasn't right. ready. Maybe there, you know, it's it, it's kind of like, but it's a wonderful way to learn. And if you can do it in a group of people and and um, pick through it and dissect it, um, you'll be amazed at uh, some of the. Um, aha moments you have, but on top of that, how it changes your life. It, so it, it suddenly, does. you know, you suddenly are looking at things differently. You're feeling differently about things, and and it's really cool. And and when those moments happen, that that then you're going to look for somebody to talk to about this, and and you know, you're going to have to give the book to somebody else and say, read this so we can talk. Yeah, exactly. That's your method. It's true, though. <laughs> it's totally true. And it's wonderful to sit and brainstorm and talk and, and uh, philosophize about different things. And I love sharing information like this. I think it's, it's just very inspiring. And I hope that the listeners got something out of it tonight. I, I hope that if you have any questions, contact either myself or Barbara. You know, we will try to answer it best we can, I guess. But, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's just really nice to, to be able to touch on this tonight. And, and the way we've been doing it for a couple months, what, last month, too? Yeah. Well, and and I think if we do get any questions that that you know are, yeah, I if we get questions, we'll we'll absolutely try to answer them. But you know, maybe if we get any that that you know really seem to be asked over and over again, we can address them next time, and mm-hmm. and see if we can. Now, now we can shed our lights on them, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the right light. <laughs> Right, it's our it's our interpretation, and also some some listeners might have their own interpretation of the data too, and that's that's another thing too. See what they, oh, yeah. they come I across would, while they're I reading would, it. Yeah, would love to have insight um, from other people as well because mm-hmm. it does it does. Well, you know, anything that that makes you think, anything that opens the door to uh, reaching into yourself for that inner wisdom, is is wonderful and it, it it's a growth process and it's amazing and and i said before i don't sleep after we do this because my mind is going 24 miles an hour um <laughs> you know 124 okay. miles it's just you know i i'm thinking and the the you know i i don't know i'm, I'm not one of these people that can suddenly um you know shut a book and, and lay down and go to sleep there's there's it, it's it's Gurgitating in my consciousness, and it's like, hey, did you think of this? And then, you know, so that, so mm-hmm. that, and I'm sure you're the, you're the same way. And oh yeah, one thing though, with with your reading this, you talk a lot slower. And well, that's and, what I mean because I'm trying to get their old. I I don't what I don't know what kind of English it is, but yeah, I've got a really slow. <laughs> There's a lot of thou and this, and you know. <laughs> he wrote he wrote it in English. It's it's not a tra- right. but but it is it is supposedly a translation from Atlantean. Okay. Because the way it's so, written, you really have to um, you have to slow down because otherwise I'll just stream it in a different language. I mean, not different language, but I'll just put a different you know a whole different design work in there with verbs and this and that. So that's well, it's what kind I do. Of like, I, I could easily it's rewrite kind of, it. <laughs> it's like the Bible. <laughs> The Bible was mm-hmm. not originally originally written in Old English. The thous and the these and the whatnots. I mean, mm-hmm. they weren't in the Aramaic or the Hebrew or or the Latin. So, um, right. you know, I, I, this may be something that he put in because he thought it made it sound more profound, or not. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, um, you know what I else. Have, I never, I never got into reading Shakespeare. Okay, just a heads up. <laughs> Give you an idea. <laughs> I 
I appreciate no. it, but I, you know. I I, I don't this either. Is the, I it's it's the it's the same thing, but right. but the fact the fact that it's written almost as poetry mm-hmm. does feel almost as though it was chanted at one time. I get that too, like a like almost like a music, um, like yeah, like a sounding of some kind or a song. I think yeah, you're right. You know. I, it, it just feels like it, it's a chant, and and mm-hmm. um, I don't want to try it because I have no voice. And I, I, but I would do it in a group. It it just feels as though by by chanting it with a group or something, you might get you might get another energy, you might get another um, impression from it. Cool material, <laughs> very cool. Um, we are out of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been wonderful to be with you tonight to share and explore the Emerald Tablet. So, thank you, Barbara. Totally, my pleasure. Um, and, and, and to next the month, too. yeah, next month. Oh, yeah, they're there too. Um, <laughs> I keep forgetting, you know, that 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 you know. It just I saw the clock and I thought, holy mackerel, we're almost out of time. Um, but but I, I want to thank you so much for bringing Neon Twilight to. To uh, Nightlight, you are an amazing addition, and Thank um, you. we will we will certainly continue with this and and go more deeply into some of this material and share our confusion, our wisdom, and our insights with with those who are listening. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. And Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Oh, well, thank you for sharing your show with me. I really appreciate that. It's a lot lot more fun. It really is. Oh, definitely. Definitely. So so we're going to say goodnight, and we're going to thank people for sharing uh, their time with us. And the show will be up on YouTube and on, um, (laughs) I want to say Ramble, and it's not that. um, Rumble? Rumble. And on Rumble. (laughs) Yes, thank you. Uh, within the next couple of days and um, we look forward to any questions, insights or whatever. If you want to send them to us, do that and uh, we will talk with all of you uh, next time. Good night everybody. Night.